property. There we go. Let's do this now. Okay, we're recording. Um, this is a presentation that is part of our second Sunday speaker series. I'm Connie Swoboda. I work for Black Hawk County Conservation at Hartman Reserve. Uh, this presentation, as I mentioned, is being recorded and we will post it on the Black Hawk County Conservation YouTube channel in case you want to watch again or refer somebody to it. Um, the second Sunday speaker series is once a month through Hartman Reserve. Lately, they've been online for obvious reasons. And um, it's different speakers every month on a subject related to nature. Um, Thank you all for coming, and I want to introduce our, our speaker today is Vicki Edelnant, and I'll let her uh, tell you a little bit about herself and how she came to know Road Scholar. So okay. Vicki? Well, this is so much fun because it's like just sitting down with a bunch of my friends. There's <laughs> Trudy, and I see Ron and Denise, I don't know if we've met before, but, and there's Steve and Jerry, and then I get to meet some new people too. So this is just wonderful. Um, thank you all for coming. I can't believe that y'all are sitting inside on this beautiful day. Um, I will confess that I've gotten somewhat used to Zoom, but uh, it's still not as good as in person. But um, as Connie said, if you raise your hand or if you send a message to chat, we'll do the questions at the end. And that way, if people don't wanna stay for the whole chat, uh, question and answer business, you can bug out when you're ready. Um, I'm guessing that you guys are here because you guys, you women and men are here because you enjoy uh, nature and learning and travel. And uh, so I'm hoping that I hit some of the things that you're interested in. Of course, it's no secret that travel has been suspended for quite some time now and that um, we expect to travel again at some point, but just um, timing is just perfect. I was telling Connie, Road Scholar has come up with some virtual travel programs that I'll be telling you about, and I just learned about them yesterday. So it's, the timing is terrific. Um, some of you may know about Road Scholar already. It used to be called Elder Hostel. Does that ring any bells with anybody? Um, in yeah in the olden days um i'm not entirely sure why they changed their mind about what they were called but in my opinion i think it's because as people like me boomers who got a little bit older we didn't want to be called elder and so they changed to road scholar and it's a clever pun it's r-o-a-d scholar but there you have it so um i got involved because i am a uh, a lifelong Iowan with a big wanderlust, and I love traveling, and I am an educator, and I love learning, and I like getting to travel more than just sort of the touristy way to get a little bit behind the scenes, and Road Scholar uh, provided all of that. So um, Connie already introduced me. I am a, an ambassador for Road Scholar. Ambassadors are people who volunteer to inform uh, any audience that's interested about Road Scholar experiences. Road Scholar is a not-for-profit educational group travel for adults, primarily people over 50, but um, they, I'll tell you more about other folks that are interested. Many of you already know I've been fortunate uh, to travel a good bit. I've been to 32, I think, different countries and all but three states now, I still have Idaho, Mississippi, and Alabama on my list. So maybe when we can travel again, I can make a very big loop and, and hit, or two different trips, we'll see. Um, one fellow though that I talked to the last time I made this presentation said, well, you might think you've traveled, but I've been to all the US, all the US states twice, and all of the provinces in Canada, as well as, and he named off a whole bunch of different countries. So whether you're a novice traveler or a veteran, um, this can, can be either way. I recommend Road Scholar. Um, I think it's a great way to learn and to travel. I have been personally on three Road Scholar trips. 
one to Pasadena, California to the Rose Parade uh, that I'll tell you a little bit about as we go, one to Washington DC and that one was a program, I think it was four or five days and it was called Spies, Lies and Espionage and one to South Africa and Zimbabwe and Botswana. So you'll get to see a little bit of the photos from my trips but uh, also a variety of photos from Rhodes Scholar. So what I'm going to talk about today is, uh, here's the overview. Um, this is a picture from our most recent Rhodes Scholar trip. My husband, my sister, and my brother-in-law and I went about a year and a half ago to South Africa. Uh, we spent the first part of our trip about five or six days in Cape Town and then went to Pretoria and took the Rovos Railroad, which is, if you ever get a chance, it's fabulous. It's like the Orient Express, luxury railroads that they have taken these old railroad cars and um, refurbished them. And we took that for three days and nights across from Pretoria to Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe. And then the rest of the trip was a uh, camera safari. So that's a little aside about that picture, whoops. Um, hang on here. Here we go. Um, so I'm going to talk about who's involved in Road Scholar, both in terms of travelers and who the um, people in Road Scholar who organize and deliver the trips are, what a Road Scholar trip is like and how that might be different from uh, other travel that you might do, what's available right now during COVID pandemic, and then what does Road Scholar offer folks who are specifically interested in the kinds of things that I am guessing you all are interested in at, if you're interested in Hartman Nature Reserve. So um, nature and environmental programs that they offer. Am I hitting the target audience approximately right? You guys are li would like to know about travel and about nature programs and wildlife and conservation, that sort of thing? Yes, no? Yes, maybe. Okay, good. So Rhodes Scholar um, describes themselves as a university of the world, which I really like that. Um, historically, Rhodes Scholar has offered uh, travel ad adventures, educational travel adventures in 150 different countries and all 50 states. As I said, they're a not-for-profit. Um, Obviously, you know, we can't resume travel. So right now, until we can safely resume travel, um, Road Scholar has figured out a virtual way to open up the world to you all that I'll be telling you more about. About 5 million people have traveled with Road Scholar. They call themselves Road Scholar alumni. And there are many reasons why I think you should join as well. Um, the people who participate, in Road Scholar. This is the group that went with us uh, to Tanzania and, and Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe. They are people who are interesting, I think. Um, many are educators, but not all. Uh, we had people in this group who were uh, stockbrokers and um, a chiropractor and a physician and um, a woman who worked for the State Department. So all kinds of different interesting people and they are people who are interested. Um, they're the sort of people that you hope are sitting next to you at the next dinner party that you get to go to, if and when we ever get to go to dinner parties. But they're all lifelong learners, and I think that you would enjoy meeting them as much as I have enjoyed meeting them. Um, this is a, another slide from that trip about a year and a half ago. There are people of all different backgrounds and abilities. I mentioned some of the backgrounds. This is Dale and Dale had polio when he was a child and so he walks with a crutch and a brace on his leg and he worked hard with the Road Scholar folks before signing up for this trip to make sure that it was accessible and that he would be able to participate and I'll tell you more about the different levels of physical activity that Road Scholar has available so that anybody of any um, ability or background can be a participant. You can go solo on a Road Scholar trip. Um, they have in the past, excuse me, 
just water, I promise. In the past, um, they have arranged for solo travelers to either pay a small stipend to um, a supplement to have a single room, or they would match you up with a roommate. For right now, they're not gonna be matching people with roommates um, until we're sure that it's safe to do that. Obviously couples travel and then they have intergenerational programs so you can go with your grandkids if you're interested. Um, most of the programs can be reserved for a private group. So if you had a, a family gathering your reunion and you wanted to, you all dreamed of going on a trip together, Road Scholar would organize one of their, you could pick one of their uh, programs and they have many, many, many programs and we'll get into that in a bit to choose from and reserve it as long as you have a group of 20 or more. Um, the 21st person can attend a program for free or your organization can earn 5% back if you choose not to have 21 people. Um, if, if you are interested in that, I can get you more information on that as we go. Um, lifelong learning institutes, families, hiking, birding clubs, different kinds of groups of all. This is a a picture of a group that was interested in political history that went to Havana together. And you can see, you know, the, the old uh, cars that we know they still have uh, available in Cuba. It was pretty, pretty cool. In addition to the people who travel with Rhodes Scholar, uh, it, they have world-class faculty. And I can tell you from my three experiences, they are, they really are world-class folks. Um, they feature the very best group leaders who have experience in the countries or the part of the, the United States where you travel. And they have local lecturers that hop on and hop off in and out of the program with you. Um, our experts have been carefully selected by Rhodes Scholars and they're reviewed by you if you participate in a program so that they don't ever have a dud back if they ever get a dud. Um, we're lucky, if we're lucky, we can all remember a teacher that made learning fun. And these are the kinds of teachers that Rhodes Scholar had as an inspiring teacher who made it a sport to learn. Um, here are some faculty, this is a program that I was not on, but this is, this is Peter. He was an Afrikaner who was um, with us while we were in Cape Town. He grew up in Cape Town and had passed exams to be a Rhodes Scholar faculty person and um, could talk with us about Cape Town history, what it was like growing up there. Um, and then this person, if you can see him in my picture, that's Mark. And he was with us the whole time. He is a qualified safari guide and knows all about the plants and animals and uh, had to, he, he told us about becoming qualified, that 400 people apply to become guides and through a whole series of exams and practical exams and so forth, five were eventually qualified out of the 400 and he was one of those. So the faculty are, are just fabulous. Um, these are pictures from the, um, these first two are pictures from our Pasadena trip. This is a former Rose Queen, and she was one of the lecturers that we had who um, explained to us how the high school girls are chosen from Pasadena High School to become Rose Queens and so forth. These are women, we were supposed to have seen the equestrian, um, the horse, um, what do you call them, entries in the parade, in the Rose Parade, uh, but they couldn't let us do that because there was some kind of equine virus the year that we went. So these women came in costume, they're part of the Victorian travelers, and they explained to us how they make their costumes, they showed us what the bustle looks like underneath that, um, that dress, they explained how they train their horses to be calm in crowds that they don't use any um, drugs or tranquilizers. This fellow on the right, his name was Noor, and he actually lived in 
uh, one of the townships that was destroyed during apartheid in South Africa. And he explained to us, uh, at this, this was at the District 6 Museum, and he explained to us how they had been notified one night that their village, their neighborhood was mixed race and it was um, mixed religion. It had Muslims as well as Christians and Jews living there. And they were to be, that was no longer allowed during um, the apartheid. And they came in, they had 24 hours to get their things out. And they came in with bulldozers and just flattened that whole portion. And the people who had lived there built a map on a piece of big piece of canvas and they all signed their names where their houses had been. He, he gave a fabulous presentation. So the faculty and the speakers that you get with Rhodes Scholar are just phenomenal. Um, you really get inside information that is not like traveling like a tourist any other time. So what are Rhodes Scholar trips like? Well, <laughs> excuse me, as you can see from the slide, I want to tell you they are varied in very many ways and they are flexible. And what do I mean by that? Well, they're educational. Um, I've already told you a little bit about the lectures and the discussions on site. This is a picture from uh, one of the Rhodes Scholar uh, Adventures, Adventure number 2810 on the uh, Hawaiian Islands uh, at the Hawaii National Park and Volcanoes National Park and Pearl Harbor. Um, they are experiential. So these are pictures from two of my trips. This one shows that on the Pasadena trip, we actually got to help build a float that was in the Rose Parade. Um, this is the float that we worked on, the very first float that um, said Rose Parade. And my job was cutting little petals off of straw flowers, mixing them with glue and painting them on the edge of one of the letters in rows. <laughs> and my dad and I went on that trip together and just had, you know, a super time. Um, we got to see the bands. We got to see the talk with the speakers, as I told you, and then work on the on the float and then go to the parade. And afterwards, we got to go up and see each of the floats. Um, close up, it was, it was a terrific trip. This picture on the right is from our uh, time in Zimbabwe, and this is a village that we visited. The lady is um, pounding millet with um, avocado oil and other, or palm seed oil, depending on what's available to her, and that is a staple of their diet, and they mix it into a paste and make little balls, and she gave us some to taste. And I will have to tell you, I am not a very discerning eater. I like most everything. I would not necessarily choose to have that again, but it was very nutritious. And um, it was really an, a kind of a humbling experience to see what they live on. Road Scholar trips are also a good value. Um, here you can see, this is an actual comparison of a Road Scholar trip and another trip um, by to a similar destination. Um, you can see the number of nights for the Road Scholar was five. Um, and this is going to be recorded. So if you want to go back and look at this, I will tell you that um, Road Scholar trips are, could you travel more cheaply? Yes, you could. Um, but because it's a not-for-profit, not Road Scholar is dedicated to making its learning adventures as accessible uh, to the widest possible audience. They do have scholarships available. And I would argue that this is a much better value than what you get on a commercial tour because you get these experiential and behind the scenes kinds of things. Um, it's because every Road Scholar learning adventure includes most meals and all the lodging, all the tips and taxes, all the behind the scenes experiences, the expert lectures, the, uh, the group outings, and 24 seven emergency assistance. Um, traveling with them is just a breeze. You, you, know, you don't have to think about anything. They take care of everything so you can focus on your experience. Um, as I say, yes, you could pay less, but uh, you get 
full field trips, you get insider access. The group leaders are a real value and all the details and taxes and gratuities are included. So those are what, that's, that's my sales pitch. Now I, I will just focus on what the experiences are like. Um, if you are staying home, staying safe these days, you might try the Road Scholar virtual adventures. If you never thought you would like a virtual experience, um, think again. Um, Road Scholar has taken their most popular instructors on the best programs and turned them into online versions of the educational travel adventures through Zoom. So uh, if you're like me and many of you have had quite a few Zoom experiences already, the difference um, between some virtual programs and the Road Scholar program is the expert, the trip, trip leader goes to the place, to Peru or Paris or wherever, and then you get on the Zoom with them so you can ask questions. Um, the example that I have seen most recently was a Zoom from Paris, standing in front of Notre Dame, the cathedral, and the lecturer was talking about the restoration process after the fire and about the history of the flying buttresses and the architecture of Notre Dame. And people could ask questions and be engaged that way. Um, they offer day long lectures. If you're looking for something more in depth, they offer three to five day, what they're calling uh, virtual adventures that are as close as possible to replicating an actual road trip as one can get these days virtually. And I don't know if you're like me, but I know about in January or February, I'm going to be itching to get out of town. And if I can't do it the way I'm used to doing it, going virtually this way might be the next best thing. Thousands of people have already tried these online learning and they have been very well received. Um, I think I told you they're expert led and virtual field trips. Um, so it, it really is something special. They offer um, Zoom training for anybody who hasn't had every Wednesday and they have a link so that you can do it. They offer it live every Wednesday afternoon. I think it's 1.45 Eastern time. So it'd be 12.45 our time, um, but they are, uh, also offering them as a link. So if you wanted to do that, you know what Zoom looks like. Um, you get to ask your questions. It's interactive. This is a snapshot of a group of participants that went on a re recent adventure online on the Appalachian Trail. Um, the young man with the glasses in the headset in the middle. Let's see if we can, whoops, if we can see him. Hang on. This fellow right here, that's the group leader. Um, and and uh, this is a, a perfect antidote, I would say, to the COVID blues. Uh, that's a quote from one of the participants. So if you think that might be something you're interested in, here's the virtual link. It's www.roadscholar.org slash virtual campus. And you can see, I think they have 22 different uh, virtual programs now, and they're adding new programs all the time. We do want you to know, of course, that uh, your well being is a top priority. So they are doing health screening, requiring face coverings, masks, enhanced cleaning, social distancing, 24 7 emergency assistance is available as always. So um, we're trying to do to have something available now, but we're all looking forward to when we can resume travel again sometime soon. Um, they'll continue to offer an assortment of trips. You can uh, choose from a variety of adventures, such as. Um, so here's what a Road Scholar trip is normally like. You go on their website, you can choose a variety of activity levels. So it can be anything from easy going in the traditional adventures to on your feet, to keep the pace, to if you're a hiker, a camper, a, you know, a person who repels from the mountaintops, you can do a let's go physically challenging experience, or they have some programs that go to the same place, 
but if you choose one date, it can be easy going. If you choose another date, it can be more physically strenuous if you're interested in a little more exercise. They have outdoor adventures, some that they call outdoor no sweat, that are, um, you go by a golf cart or a trolley or, you know, you're outdoors, but you're, you don't have to expend a lot of energy to a spirited, to a more challenging, and then again, the choose your own pace on different days. Um, there are lots of different kinds. I think I'm a, a slide ahead, hang on. Well, I think I'm not. Different grandparent adventures I mentioned. My dad took one of his grandkids kayaking in the Northwest. Um, that's an example of one of the many grandparent adventures available. They have signature cities programs, so you could go and learn all about the history of New York or New Orleans or Paris or um, Athens, Greece. Um, you can sort by interests, and this is just one of the slides to show you all of the different kinds. So the number in parentheses here, they had 13 different programs at the time I copied this that are focused on photography. Uh, 28 program extensions, 221 retreats, um, 10 service learning programs, 317 programs on regional studies, so Appalachia or the Ozarks or the Northwest, or you can, you can get the, the idea. Um, everything from crafts and winter sports uh, to language study, history, culture, film festivals, religion, philosophy, baseball, music appreciation, um, programs small to large. They'll be resuming those small programs first. Okay, I promised you programs that might be of particular interest to people interested in the outdoors or in nature or in wildlife or the environment. And so here are some that I have to share with you. Um, Okay, I'm behind in my notes here. Okay. Um, 54 different trips that are focused on animals or wildlife. This example of the fly fishing in Alberta's trout streams is one. Not all those trips are being offered right now, of course, but um, as I said, the focus will resume on small trips and on outdoor trips, so we're lucky if that's of interest to you. There is something for all interests and all modes of transportation, if you like, everything from bicycling to barge travel through, the Bel through Belgium and the Netherlands. Um, if you're not so much interested in the out of doors, you could do bridge or you could do baseball, all different kinds of things. And you can search by interest. Um, nature and environment, there are 198 different programs to iconic destinations like uh, the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. Uh, this is a shot um, my husband and I have been fortunate enough to go to see uh, Mount McKinley, Denali in Alaska, and here's the fireweed that you can see here in the foreground of this picture in the Alaska prairie. Um, Volcano National Park in Hawaii, uh, Costa Rica, um, and then some of the breathtaking beauty that you see when you travel and pay attention to the out of doors. Okay. I think I'm in the right, on the right slide for the, my notes here. Um, 54 different trips that, uh, focus on wildlife and birding is a big interest for many people. Um, you see whale watching, ecology. Um, this is a picture I think, uh, maybe you guys know. Is that Niagara Falls? No. It's, I don't think it's Victoria Falls because that you see more than just that. I'm not positive. Let me see if I've got it in my notes. Birding and ecology, the, the bird, it, this is Illinois. Um, this whale watching is a grandparent event, adventure or a family adventure. They also have a Mexico for women that is a women only trip. 
um, the California migration of whales, elephant seals and birds, kayaking in whales and grizzlies in British Columbia, and more. This one, as I said, is uh, birding in ecology in Illinois. This is, let's see, Costa Rica. This is Ontario, South Texas, New Zealand. This is the Everglades. And then these are a couple of photos from some of the African trips um, that, that are available. They have um, over 218 different trips that focus on the na U.S. national parks. Um, you can, I don't know if you guys are as enthusiastic, you, I, I gotta stop saying guys, you people are as enthusiastic about um, the national parks as I am. I hope to live long enough to see all of them. I don't know if I'm gonna make it, but I've got quite a few stamps in my national parks passport so far. Um, what you see here is Yosemite. And this is from a program called Trains, Gold, and Robots that is a grandparent grandchild adventure. Um, this one, I'm not positive which this one is. It might be the kayaking one that my dad went on in the Northwest. They have uh, lots of programs that you can pursue that are walking and hiking programs. And terrible timing, but in the spring of 2020, Road Scholar leased a boat, a ship. This uh, Aegean Odyssey is leased by National Scholar and it's the first ever floating university. Um, they have trips to the Greek Isles, Ephesus and Turkey, the best of the Aegean Sea and the best of the Black Sea, Turkey, the Ukraine, Romania and Bulgaria. I love to cruise. I'm not sure how soon it's gonna be before I cruise again, but uh, the pearls of the Adriatic, that is Greece, Albania, Croatia, and Italy, the coast of Italy, the best of Ireland and England, um, Iberia, France, and Morocco, and many more are planned when the ship can sail again. Um, it is a perfect vessel. Um, let me go back one here. Uh, they've developed their own itineraries, spending more than a day at most ports of call, which any, if any of you have cruised, you know that's not always the case. You usually get a few hours in one port of call. Um, they can offer their adventures at 20 to 30% below commercial voyages. Um, they create quality onboard educational opportunities, which you get some lectures on commercial cruises, but, but not the quality that you get with Road Scholar. And they can offer low cost solo cabins if you are traveling on your own. Um, every, again, a variety of activity levels from easy pace to active. And they have eight group leaders and experts on board. So you can go to the website for more information when they resume traveling on the Aegean Odyssey. Um, shipboard learning is something that you can explore by, via small ships, river boats, expedition ships, and as well as this uh, chartered or leased ship that belongs to Road Scholar. Okay, I'm gonna kind of take a pause here. How are we doing for time, Connie? Well, we have about 20 minutes left. Okay. Well, I want to let you know that you can sign up for more information. Connie will get an email from me in the next day or two. Um, and she will send that out to any of you who've provided your contact information. If you are interested, you know, no pressure, but if you are interested in more information, um, she will send you a link to receive email uh, communications from Road Scholar. If you are interested either in the virtual campus programs or if you just want to dream for when we can travel and learn again in the future sometime. I've got just a few uh, slides to show you that I want to show you how you can search the Road Scholar website 
because it is a very cool website and it's a lot of fun to noodle around on if you want to dream and think about when you can travel again. Here's the website, www.roadscholar.org, or you can call their phone number if you have uh, questions about traveling. That's 800-454-5768. And when you go there, you can, you'll see something like this. And you can search for what you want to learn. You can search, um, click on the Find the Road Scholar Experience or Find an Adventure. You can look at special offers. You, if you know you want to go somewhere in the Mediterranean, you can search by destination. Um, so it's, you can search by how, how long a program. If you only want to go for a couple of days and you want to go soon, um, you can search by date and length of program. You can see ratings from people who've gone on this before. You can say, I only want to go if I can be really physically active, or I only want to go if I can be a sloth like me and sit in my chair and listen and lay back and relax. Um, you can search by price point and see how much it costs. So it's a really easy to navigate website and I recommend it. When you go online, here's another shot of, you know, as you click in, you can, whoops, hang on. You can search by destination, by activity level, by date, by how long, by your interests, by price and so forth. Or you can say, you know, I only want to see programs in France and see that there are 50 different programs in France that you can look at. When you click on a particular program, you get an at, at a glance overview of this is what the program is. You get a day by day itinerary. And then if you click on the view the full itinerary, you get a detailed description of what each day is like. I will tell you in my experience, most of the days, um, well, it varied, um, but on the Pasadena program and pretty much on our, Af our Africa program, we had programs in the morning um, they didn't get you up too early in the morning, except in Africa when we were on camera safari, because that was the best time to see the animals was at dawn or at dusk. So, but you can always opt out if you don't want to, or we went on some of the camera safaris after dark. Um, not everybody chose to do that uh, in the safari vehicle that we were in, but that was a good time, of course, to see more nocturnal animals as well. Um, so you get a lot of information about it. Um, and I don't know if you can see it on this page. You can see the size of the group and there is always a reading list. The reading list is always optional, but if you want to do more in-depth study of the place that you're going, you can. And I have found some fascinating uh, things to read based on that. Before we went to Africa, I, you know, when I was in college, we didn't study African history much. And so I was interested in some of the um, background and, and learned a lot about Nelson Mandela. Um, we were supposed to have gone to Robben Island on a tour to see the prison where Mandela was uh, incarcerated but the weather didn't cooperate. The ferries never ran any of the days we were in Cape Town because the water was too rough. But, you know, you have to be flexible when you travel. So um, in addition, on the, on the website, you get information uh, in addition to on particular trips that you might be interested in going on. You can find out, uh, you can see videos, you can see blogs, discussion boards for people on the trip or who've been on the trip before or who are contemplating going on the trip. Um, if time and technology permit, you can go and look. You can also look at the world map and just say, okay, I want to see one of the 36 programs here in Europe and click on, or in, looks like, what is that? <laughs> Okay, I'm close to done, guys. Um, I had to share some of my favorite photos from my Road Scholar trips with you. One of the neat things that we got to do when we were in Zimbabwe was visit the Lasidi School. And this is a picture of the kids at the Lasidi School. The Lasidi School was actually founded by a Road Scholar participant a number of years ago. 
when that person visited Victoria Falls, he discovered that the children in that area had to walk six hours to get to a preschool. And so he founded this school and he started with preschool and now they are up through fifth grade. The, he has added a clinic and uh, a healthcare facility for uh, parents as well as the children. And they have added um, a boarding option for children from further away. And it was, it was just a delightful day. I don't know if I can describe for you. When we got off, our, there were 17 of us in our, or maybe, maybe 18 of us in our, our little van. Um, when we arrived at the school, fifth graders came and one child took each of us by the hand. Now you probably couldn't do that, but those days they took us each by the hand and led us to an area. And then they sang a welcome song for us, welcome to La City School. And they did um, traditional dances for us. It was great fun. And then the, the children took us around and showed us what they were studying, um, what they were learning. They had drawn pictures on the chalkboard of the traditional foods that they were eating. And they had across the top of the chalkboard, um, the alphabet, in Indibele, the language that they, is their primary native first language there, and had pictures of the different kinds of foods for each of the letters in the alphabet and Indibele that they ate, including caterpillars. And so we just learned so much and it was so neat. And we had had the opportunity afterwards when we came back home then to sponsor a child $300, a, I mean, no obligation, but $300 a year pays for their tuition for the year, their two meals a day at school, their uniform, their health care. So we felt like it was a great investment for us, a, a wonderful thing to do. Probably another highlight of our days uh, in uh, Zimbabwe were we went on an elephant encounter at a sanctuary where elephants who've been injured or who are sick and wild are taken to recuperate and in most cases returned to the wild and they took us on an elephant walk jumbo the big elephant uh, led the way and we followed and we were taught how to give them treats so you say trunk up and they raise their trunk up and they open their mouth and you throw a handful of uh, treats that look kind of like rabbit pellets into their mouth, which they like very much, or trunk down, and then they curl their trunk down and you put the um, pellets in their trunk and then they scoop it up to their mouth. So it was, it was a really wonderful day that we got to do that. And then um, we, got, we each got to have our pictures taken, um, me in my goofy hat, but the sun was very strong, so I wore my goofy hat. And then this is one of my favorite pictures from, uh, you can kind of see here in the background, the safari vehicles that we were in when we were watching the various, we saw all the big five, um, lions, elephants, rhinoceros, uh, hippopotamus, um, wildebeest, it was, it was a fabulous trip and I would highly recommend it. And I hope to go on one of the Northern Africa to the um, safari on the great migration in Kenya and, and uh, Kenya and Namibia. Um, is that right? Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, I hope that it didn't sound too much like a sales pitch that I was able to share some of the opportunities with you that I hope you would get to enjoy either virtually or maybe in the spring we'll get to start traveling again. If you have any questions, here's my email. Please feel free to email me, uh, vicki.edelnant at gmail.com. I'd be happy to talk with you. And if any of you know of other groups that would like to hear about Road Scholar, if you're part of a birding group or a bridge group or a bicycle group or any other sort of group um, that would like to hear about it, I'm available to make presentations. Thanks so much for spending 
part of your Sunday afternoon with me. I really, and it's great to see you all. Well, thank you, Vicki. Does anybody have any questions for Vicki? Yeah, I, I do. Vicki, hi, Steve Chamberlain hi, Steve. here. Good to see you and good presentation. Very interesting. Thank you. On, on the tours that I have been involved with, not Road Scholar tours, but, but my company's tours, um, we also identify an activity level. And I've got a question for you about activity level enforcement. Uh, the activity level is, is identified as being like required, but of course you can't really enforce it. You can't tell people you can't go on this trip. And so I have experienced a couple trips where people who are really not capable of the, of the activity level required uh, uh, come on the trip and, and it has caused some, some problems. And I'm wondering how Road Scholar deals with people who are just not up to the activity level that really they should have been to go on a certain trip. That's a very good question. Um, they do ask you very pointedly. I mean, you fill out a form uh, that has a little bit of medical history before you go. And they do, I mean, they rely on you to be honest, but they do ask you, you know, they, they're careful to describe what the activity level means. So if it says easygoing, you know, that means that you have no more than a mile of walking or half an hour of standing on a given trip. But of course, there are likely, as you say, to be people who don't um, adhere to that. And in my experience, people are given an option then just to stay behind on the bus, um, maybe visit with, with the bus driver or with the, um, one of the lecturers while the rest of the group goes on mm -hmm. um, and then they'll pick you up again later and it's not always possible because for example in some cases you know you're dropped off here uh, as you know the bus goes ahead mm -hmm. and then you meet them because you've traveled along the way but I think they do a pretty good job of trying to urge people to contact them like Dale in our group had several conversations and he said before they said yeah we think this is a trip that's appropriate for you he had several conversations with them and said this is what I can do these are the kinds of accommodations that I would need and and this is what I can't do and is this a trip for me or can you the nice thing is they have so many trips that they can usually recommend something similar at a at a different level if if it looks like this isn't something you can do. Mm -hmm. And I traveled on several of the trips with my father when he was 90 years old. And you know, you, mm -hmm. I've traveled with you yeah. and with my dad at the same time. And you know, he had some mobility challenges and um, he might've been one of those people that was kind of breaking your rules occasionally. No, no not, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, 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 it is, they're very good about accommodating him. And he, after he went on, he and I went on the Pasadena trip and it was not the lowest level of activity. It was the next. And after that trip, he said, you know what, I, if I go again, it's going to have to be an easy going one. Mm -hmm. That was, that was a stretch for him, that trip. And they did a, a marvelous job of getting us from the doorstep to the doorstep on that trip as much as they possibly could. I think the only time it was difficult for him was we had to walk a ways from where we could park the coach to the grandstand for the Rose Parade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did I answer your question? Yes, interesting, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, there's a message here from Denise and Ron. Uh, Denise and I have been on five Rhodes Scholar trips. We enjoyed Galapagos. Oh. Machu Picchu the most and Costa Rica was also very enjoyable kayaking the lower Columbia we also rate very highly I'm, I'm trying to unmute you guys um, can you try to unmute that microphone in the lower left Machu Picchu and the Galapagos is very high on my wish list it was fantastic and these were all through Road Scholar Yes. 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 Well, you Another have more experience than I. I'm. I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed it as much as I have. Mm -hmm. 
Another excellent kayaking was in uh, Lake Ontario on the co uh, Canadian side. Thousand that, Islands. Called the Thousand Islands. And that was fairly rigorous. But Some, it was good. But it was good. Very, very nice. Fairly rigorous, huh? I like that phrase. Yeah, I think yeah. I think you're much more robust than I. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much, Vicki. Uh, those virtual um, trips look really interesting. I think I'll check into that. Uh, yeah, like me you too. Said, coming about January, you'll really feel like you need to get yep. outside get away from or uh, part from the white outside. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I know that I'll just be itching to do something. And, and I've enjoyed like the keep on learning or the lifelong learning from you and I, but to be able to go somewhere with an expert, you know, even if it's go virtually would be a lot of fun, I think. Mm -hmm. And they have the, the one hour that's $25. And then they have up to five days that are a little more. So you can you can pick and choose what works for your time and your budget and your interests. Vicki, has the Road Scholar organization given you any hints at all as to when they think personal travel might be starting up again? They, they said officially, they don't know. Um, they said, of course, it will depend on the comfort level of people who want to travel with them. Mm -hmm. But nothing official, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming today so to our um, second Sunday speaker series. We our next one is going to be uh, in the December eighth, I think it is. So uh, you can check our website, or we can you can check our Facebook page for more details. And again. I have been recording this, and if you'd like to see it again or refer people to it, it'll be on the Black Hawk County Conservation YouTube channel, right? Well, have thank a good day, and thank you all. Bye-bye. Okay.